All right. So, um, good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Kareem Yagmor, and uh, welcome to this uh, second session on uh, Android's Trouble. So, um, today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the HIDL uh, part of Treble, which is the hardware interface definition language, and there's obviously a bit more to it than just a language, um, but uh, um, it, it's kind of like a, the all-encompassing uh, tech term uh, for that uh, in, uh, in, 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 in Treble. Okay, as um, yesterday's session, um, I've got um, uh, a uh, crowd here in front of me that um, I can um, get uh, to see and uh, they can call me out um, in, over audio um, if uh, they have any questions or if I'm um, going uh, in the wrong direction or anything like that. And as usual, I'll also be able to see um, the questions that we get on uh, YouTube uh, and um, I'll pick those up um, as well. So where, wherever I get a, a question uh, on whatever channel um, you are uh, listening to this, I will repeat the question for everybody else's benefit. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll play it out uh, like that. Now, um, um, as yesterday, if you watch this session, I usually get better as I get questions. So uh, fire at will, as they say. Um, and if you watch this uh, any time in the future and you see any mistakes, uh, either in the slides or anything I say, uh, please feel free to comment on that and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Um, alrighty, so <clears throat> let me go ahead and, and, and um, um, oh, where's my clicker? Put my clicker somewhere and I can't find it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and get started here. And, um, you know, as this builds on the material that we had uh, seen yesterday. Um, I will refer you to that um, to get yourself some kind of basic background. So if you're watching this video first, um, the assumption is you know what trouble is, where it comes from, and so on and so forth. Um, and if not, um, then you can watch yesterday's video, which I'll um, add as a link um, to this specific YouTube uh, live stream itself. Okay, um, quickly uh, uh, some background about myself. So um, I'm uh, uh, the author of the Embedded Linux and Embedded Android titles for O'Reilly. Um, I've been involved in open source um, since about the mid 90s. Um, and you can uh, look in the kernel sources for my name. Um, and uh, you know, you can find me at some of the open source conferences and generally kind of like working on Android um, and Linux and helping customers take um, either of what, either of those um, and put them in all sorts of weird devices which aren't necessarily tailored initially to say run Android uh, or anything like that. Um, um, again, um, as I usually emphasize, um, I don't claim to um, be omniscient. Uh, the, the stacks that we are talking about are fairly large. So there's a good chance that you may have questions uh, for which I don't have an answer. Um, although I'm, uh, pretty good at uh, at least steering people in the right direction. Um, and if, you know, worse comes to worse, I'll just uh, do some bit of research on my side um, and, and try to get back to you, okay? Alrighty, um, as I had kind of mentioned yesterday, today's presentation um, has more technical aspects to it uh, than um, the overall kind of um, uh, discussion that we had yesterday about the origins of treble and you know the the justifications for it and the overall impact of that on the entire ecosystem um, this is more uh, bits and bytes here so we're, we're gonna start opening files up and and looking around um, and and showing you things so obviously there is a demo part and um, as I usually uh, like to uh, add a disclaimer to demos um, you know it, I, I've tried to do my sacrifices to the demo gods, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. I might have to do some adjustments along the along the way. And obviously, this is a live stream, so you know uh, we'll see if there is any hiccups along the way. Although uh, the previous one was uh, fairly uh, uneventful in terms of technical difficulties, so we'll hope this one goes as well. All right. So um, what do we want to do here? Um, what are the origins? And so we kind of touched on that yesterday. So just a really quick recap. But uh, essentially, I want to recap where Heidel uh, comes from, um, describe what it does, explain where it fits in the Android architecture, and then uh, spend most of the time here on detailing its use. Um, and I'm going to do that mostly by 
um, walking you through a um, system service, show you how it was done prior to Treble um, slash Heidel, and then show you how that works um, in uh, in the in, in the post Treble world. Okay, um, so Heidel, as we saw yesterday, is part of Android's Project Treble. The purpose of Project Treble being to allow us to have a upgradable um, stack where we can create a hardware enablement in one version and then the next version of the framework can then bolt on to that previous um, hardware enablement without too much work. Um, so that's the that's that's where this comes from. Now it does build on existing HAL concepts. It ultimately wants to replace them but as we will see they have provisions to actually tie into existing HAL implementations um, and I'll show you exactly actually examples of, of that um, during during the the slides. Um, it is similar to AIDL um, and, and I really emphasize the word similar here because there are differences um, as we will see there are uh, key parts of um, of Heidel that are different from um, from AIDL files so you can't just assume that say an AIDL file could be reusable in a, in a Heidel world. Okay, um, so um, the architecture of Android, uh, which uh, this is the diagram that I usually use in my explanations, um, is subdivided in three kind of major layers. So you have a native layer here with the kernel, the middle part with the framework, and then the applications on top. I kind of uh, went through that a bit yesterday, kind of highlighted where treble um, components were, what are the integration points, that precluded the framework from being replaced. Okay, so this is another diagram that's um, coming from my material. I didn't show this yesterday because it wasn't kind of like uh, too relevant. Um, but in in uh, as we start digging deeper and specifically here in um, in Treble, um, understanding this is 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 important. So you have system services being housed in different processes. So whereas, say for example, the previous diagram here showed you the um, the various system services as being one box. In real life, they are actually multiple boxes. So there is a process called system underscore server, which houses all of the Java system services um, and has traditionally had some of the C system services. Most of this, these have been forked out. So you've got a Surface Flinger here running separately. You've got Media Service uh, running separately. And now they've even cut this one down uh, into various parts as well. And then you've got the phone application and a few standalone applications there that are um, housing system services as independent applications. <clears throat> so one of the reasons of cutting system services up in separate processes um, has to do with reliability and responsiveness. So uh, in this specific case, we've got the um, Surface Flinger and the media services being independent. Um, and as, as I usually kind of <clears throat> do when I'm presenting this in front of a crowd, I generally ask people why they think they've, uh, the Google team decided to create some system services in C and some in Java. And, you know, pretty rapidly, usually the crowd comes up with the performance aspect. And, and that really is the key here, which is, you know, we want to have some system services which are not dependent on the Java layers garbage collection kicking in or whatever else might happen. Um, you know, since, you know, the human's interacting with this device, we don't want the human to actually perceive any sort of lag. So that's an architectural decision that was made uh, very early on and continues to this day, all right? Generally speaking, whenever you have a system service that needs to talk to hardware, it goes over the hardware abstraction layer into whatever's underneath, all right? Um, this remains the same with Heidel. Uh, what changes is how that those system services are bolting onto this um, hardware enablement that we've got here as as we will see all right um, this is um, another diagram taken from some of my um, material which shows um, how the binder driver um, it works or uh, is is layered within this uh, this stack um, and it is relevant to the present discussion because some of the Heidel stuff goes over binder now all right so whereas in the past um, the HAL abstraction uh, layer, uh, or, or sorry, the HAL modules were mapped in the address space of the process using the HAL module. Um, these days, they may actually go over binder, right? And in fact, that's the goal. The goal, the end goal of this um, is that moving forward, 
the ha hardware enablement will be reached from a system service over the binder mechanism. So just to recap here uh, of binder, we have a driver and a kernel. Uh, when it, the system boots, it's not really doing much. It is waiting for something to connect to it, and that usually is the service manager. And the service manager connects to the binder driver. It declares itself as the context manager, and thereafter, anything that wants to talk to um, that talks to binder ID zero ends up talking to the context manager. So the first party that does that usually is the system services. They connect to, to the service manager. They essentially uh, declare themselves uh, to the service manager, advertise, you know, I'm the power manager, I'm the activity manager, I'm this, I'm that. And once that has been done, then any application can talk to those system services using um, this, uh, this service manager as a discovery mechanism, all right? One thing that is interesting with um, Heidel is they've extended the binder driver now to have three different domains, all right? In the, in, in, um, the previous versions of Android, there was like just one domain. So you'd go on the device, you would type service list, and you would see everything that the system service sees, end of story, okay? Um, or oh, sorry, the service manager sees, um, and, and that was it. Um, these days, you've actually got Three domains, you've got the uh, list of system services, which is uh, minted by Google. So that's the official set of system services. You have vendor services. So those are the one, the system services added by a vendor. And then you have hardware, the what they call HW binder, which is the um, way by which remote hardware implementations provided over Heidel are now going to be exposed. Um, and so some of the communication here that went over Binder is now going to have system services, uh, sorry, um, HAL modules or more like, you know, HAL services um, running uh, s separate from the system services themselves. So um, going back to this diagram here, we're going to end up with, say, you know, kind of like a, another, you know, bigger bounding box here called, you know, um, hardware enablement. Um, and then you're going to have processes there. And essentially, instead of going downwards, we're going to go over binder to the um, other process and then from there down to the to the kernel, right? So that's something that's uh, that's important. Now, how does um, the HAL fit in a bit more detail with regards to the stack? Uh, so again, if you've seen of other presentations, this diagram will be familiar to you. So Google provides the framework with system services, the APIs that app developers use. System services will then um, go down through their loader module and uh, through the module actually uh, get to um, the hardware underneath, all right? This is traditionally how it's worked. Um, these modules and the corresponding drivers would have been provided by um, essentially the SOC vendor and then the um, device manufacturer to enable essentially that version of Android to run on, um, on this hardware. And what Heidel does essentially is it inserts itself um, somewhere smack in the middle here, as I'll show you in, the, in, in some diagrams later on, and you know how this works and, and what, it, what it has as an effect. So this is actually from yesterday with a bit more highlighting. So essentially, we've got um, the Heidel layer being inserted, as I just said, between this, the framework and the HAL modules, all right? And ultimately, what we're going to do here is replace HAL modules all together, all together by just Heidel implementations. So the contract happening here uh, is, is no longer between system services and HAL modules, but with this Heidel layer there um, in, in between, okay? So this, um, again, is a bit of recap from yesterday, so I'll do this relatively quickly. What's the role of the HAL per device hydro abstraction layer? You know, there's one for each thing. Google specifies this, manufacturers implement it, and essentially, um, you know, we've got some examples around. Um, traditionally, before Heidel and before Treble, what we had is all of these um, HALs were defined as C headers. And essentially what happened is uh, a module implementer would take the header, implement it, create a binary, and, it, and if there's an update, then they have to rework this and reship and all that kind of stuff, all right? What Heidel brings um, is essentially um, a layer that gives us versioned and essentially formalized or canonical uh, reference, implement, uh, reference uh, signatures for the different hardware types that Android supports. Um, and insofar as we are um, you know, implementing an enablement for one of these versions, 
then the future versions are supposed to actually still be able to use that implementation that we did. So if I implement, say, for example, the composer, um, the, heart, the graphics composer under, um, under Oreo, then presumably if 9 supports that version of the composer, it should continue working. Um, and the same thing on to uh, the future versions until they obsolete that Heidel implementation. Okay. Um, those are the links that I gave yesterday. Now, moving on to the uh, rework of the HAL, and this is uh, probably kind of like the, the most important part um, of this presentation because it will kind of be uh, backing or, you know, the support for uh, much of the walkthrough that I will give you um, a bit later here. So, the overall architecture, and this uh, diagram comes from, from Google's own documentation, um, is something like this. So, look at just number one for now, okay? Um, and this is what I had already shown you, okay? So this is essentially the framework talking to a legacy HAL. And essentially from there, we are um, talking to the uh, implementation that is, that is down there. So um, that's how it worked before in 7X and prior. Moving on to Treble, there are three different kind of ways of doing things. They all, however, rely on um, treble or Heidel as the, the way to tie the framework to the lower levels of the, of the implementation. In the first configuration, all right, what we're trying to do here is leverage what was already done before. So we have a legacy HAL implementation, all right, and we want to bolt a Heidel definition onto that. And so the way this works is that there's this box here called default implementation that will map the Heidel calls to legacy HAL signatures. So in other words, if I had a header for the hardware composer, um, GPS, whatever else, um, that can still be used to implement or reuse my existing implementation of a module. And then I'm going to have a default, mo uh, default uh, component here that's going to take the Heidel calls and map them down to this legacy implementation. So this is kind of like a, a way for Google to ease the movement to um, you know, full Heidelization of the stack, so to, say, so to speak. So that's one step. But in this case, we're still mapping the module in the same address space as the process <coughs> that is using it. So with the same caveats as before, which is essentially if I go back to um, this diagram here, um, if my hardware abstraction layer module crashes, it's going to drag with it everything else that's in the stack. So essentially, the, the system services that depend on it are also going to crash whenever uh, one of those modules crashes. So the second step here is to isolate essentially this default old or old implementation from the process uh, where, where the services are requested. And in this case, we've got this <clears throat> hardware service calling into the default implementation and going to the old um, implementation we had. <clears throat> Again, the spirit here is I've already got enablement for one of my components and I want to reuse that in a new version of Android, which now depends on Heidel. At the end of the day, though, what they want to do is get rid of all this legacy stuff, all right? And they want it so that um, when you call, when the system service calls on the Heidel thing, it goes over remote process, and then the vendor implementation in a remote process essentially is going to carry out the um, the the work that has to be done. And so to detail this a bit further, I kind of went in and kind of um, cre created a uh, a, uh, a a more uh, in, insightful, at least from my perspective, uh, map of, of what's really going on and ignore the other ones here. Let's just look at the classic HAL here before treble. Okay. So what did we have before treble? So let's say, um, okay, for, first of all, let's, let's look at the major parts. We've got an application process. Okay. That is trying to talk to a system service to get access to some kind of hardware that's in the kernel. And, um, between, the process and uh, between the application process and the system server, uh, the, con the main contract between these two things is the AIDL interface. And on the other side of this, between the system server process and the kernel, what we have is uh, kernel APIs. All right. 
within the application, when the application developer writes some code that has to talk to a system service, usually there's the framework libraries that are in the middle. So there's like a manager class. I'm talking to the power manager class uh, or, or, or the package manager class or whatever else, all right? Those things are going to, the, and the, those things, first of all, are running in the process, um, the same process as the app. They're gonna turn around using the IDL. So obviously implicitly here, we have a binder communication happening. On the other side of this, I got the system server implementation, which is derived from the AIDL uh, file, the same AIDL file used by the framework on the other side. Um, and so, by the way, this is for Java system services. I'll show you C system services uh, on the next slide. And so here, we essentially, we've got um, the system service Java side talking over JNI to <clears throat> the system services C++ side. Um, and then from there, using the HAL definitions, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to talk to modules uh, which are uh, implemented in C. And the same color coding that I had before here, I'm reusing on the slide as well. With Treble, what we're doing here is, so the upper, the upper layers are the same. I mean, from the app developer perspective, nothing has changed, all right? However, um, in the first configuration, which is the same in the same order as the previous diagram. So we have what they call same process or pass through HALs. <clears throat> in this case, what we got is uh, on the bottom side of the system service, instead of going to HAL definitions, right? In other words, a header file, what we're doing is talking to a HIDL definition. And then the default HIDL definition, um, default HIDL implementation, sorry, which implements these HIDL definitions is then going to take those calls, which are HIDL calls, map them down to old header files. So this is the same header files that were defined, uh, say, in previous uh, versions of Android, or at least that's how, you know, they continue working. They continue working in the same fashion, all right? And then south of that, it's all the same thing. Move on to the next configuration where we essentially isolate the hardware implementation from the system server process. In this case, the Heidel glue that's there is now essentially going to cause a transition from one process to another. From the system server side, it changes nothing. The code is the same. The, the mechanism that's gonna take care of the mapping though is the HIDL infrastructure in the stack. Um, I'm not gonna walk you through the, how that specifically works. I'll show you how the HIDL definitions are done and how we can define our own HIDLs, but I'm not gonna actually walk you through, say, the code that does, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm same process I'm, versus I am you know, remote process. Um, it, it's not gonna enrich the discussion too much. It's, it's a bit uh, too, uh, too detailed. But let's just say that I, the HIDL glue here is gonna allow me to move into another process, which is then gonna have much of what I had here in the bottom, which is the default HIDL implementation, the default definitions, the module, and then going south from there to the, to the kernel, all right? Those two states, all right, whether you're in a binderized state, so you got a remote process or you're passed through going straight down in the same process address space, they're meant to be temporary. They're meant to essentially ease the moving um, of companies or projects that have existing implementations um, so that they can take those modules and move them to 8.x uh, in a hydrolyzed fashion. But ultimately, what we want to do is get to here, all right, the right-hand side of this equation, where, again, the top side is pretty much the same as the previous configuration, except on the other side of the hydro definitions, we have a vendor uh, process which implements the hardware service, right? And you'll notice, uh, maybe not be clear here if you're looking at it from a camera angle, but it may be uh, easier if you're watching the, uh, the actual... Um, uh, slide itself. This box is in white and I decided to do it white, not gray or, or yellow because the vendor implementation here um, can now be either uh, in, um, in, in, in C or, uh, or in Java. That's a decision that, uh, that they've done. And if you go through the documentation they have online, you'll see that you, you actually have the two choices available to you. Um, okay, so that's for that's for if we have a Java system service. If we have a C system service, the stack has always been a bit different. Um, and so the top layer remains the way it was before. The bottom layers change in the same fashion that we had before. So just to give you kind of like a quick walkthrough here, um, in the case of a C++ system service, so if you're talking to the camera system service, if you're talking to Surface Flinger um, or things like that, on the app side, 
we've got essentially the app talking over the developer API, again, assuming this is a Java part of the app. Um, and this talks over JNI into the framework C++, so we're transitioning over JNI into C++ on the application side. And then we're moving into the, uh, to a client library, which then actually does the calls into the uh, system server process on the, on the other side. Uh, let me see here, uh, we got a question here. Um, uh, creating this layer diagram applied only on uh, system services. Um, how do you create a vendor system service which can expose to third-party applications? Does the third-party app have to use um, Java Heidel? Um, okay, so um, yes, these these diagrams show how um, Google adds their system services. All right. So obviously, um, if you're implementing your own system service, your vendor system service the map for you is going to be different because you don't have the framework libraries here in, in between your system service. Whether you're doing it in C, and C or Java, it doesn't really matter. You don't have the framework libraries here. You probably either have an SDK add-on or you have a custom library that you are shipping to, uh, to customers. And from that perspective, how your custom SDK add-on or library does the talking to the system service on the other side, that's for you to determine. Um, and you would not be using um, uh, so the communication between that library and the system service that you implement would not be using Heidel, all right? It would be using AIDL. That would continue being the same uh, in terms of how the system services are exposed to apps, whether they be custom system services or the system services coming from Google, that has not changed, all right? Um, what has changed is what happens on the other side of the system service, uh, which is, you know, how the system service itself talks to the lower layers. Um, as in, you can see here with the Heidel definitions being kind of like the, the, the sub part. Um, and as we had a question yesterday regarding, you know, should we use Heidel at all or could we just kind of forfeit Heidel altogether and just go straight with, you know, talking from the system service to the hardware because it's a custom system service. Uh, from that perspective, that's, that's an architecture decision that you have to make, um, you know, whether you want to go with the, using Heidel or not. But as I mentioned, the Heidel infrastructure here gives us some nice um, separation of layers, which allow us to then essentially look at implementations uh, that give us OTA, the benefit of, of OTAs and things of that nature. So um, I'm hoping this answers the question um, uh, th that was asked on, on uh, the chat there. If, if there's any follow-up question, please feel free to, uh, to do so. So, <clears throat> um, right, so just to finish off with this, so essentially, my app process is transitioning from the Java side to the C side uh, before actually making the call to the system service. This remains the same, although notice that my box here now says AIDL or slash custom code, because essentially in the older days um, of, of uh, Android, the AIDL tool, the command line tool that took AIDL files and generated code, it couldn't actually generate um, C++ code. So it could only generate Java. And um, somewhere I believe in six or seven, I can't recall anymore, I believe it's six, they added a tool called AIDL-CPP that could take actual AIDL descriptions and then generate C++. Um, and so before that, any glue between those two things was done using custom code and afterwards we could actually use um, AIDL. Okay, so um, another question here, but will vendor service be able to register the system server? If not, how will it be able to um, get handled to um, the vendor service? So no, actually you can still register system services um, uh, with the, uh, with the um, context manager. The difference here is that uh, your your service is not going to be listed as part of the main service list. Uh, is going to be part listed as part of the vendor services, but the lookup procedure should be pretty much the same. Um, uh, Google states that a VND service um, is using Heidel and AIDL is limited for um, AOSP um, service. Um, so um, I'll I'll need to check exactly what what the details of that is. If you have a if you have a link to that, uh, I'd, that'd be great. I'd be grateful for that. I'll I'll look it up. But it, it was my understanding we could still use um, we could still use uh, AIDL. I mean, if I create a um, something that looks like the um, uh, the phone application, uh, then presumably I should be able to uh, to expose that as well. Um, uh, I it, 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 whoever, I mean, if you if you're listening to me um, uh, and and you ask the question, please go ahead and uh, and and give me a link. I'll I'll check it out and uh, post an update on that uh, possibly after the video. <clears throat> 
All right, so, um, <clears throat> so that's for essentially what we've got here for the um, C++ system services. Now what I'd like to do here is give you a walkthrough um, and essentially a comparative walkthrough. So what does it look like before, um, before um, Heidel and after Heidel? Um, and so for this example, what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to check <coughs> um, the light system service and I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go through it and show you what it looked like in 7x, and then show you what it looks like in uh, in 8.x. All right. So I'm going to go here on, on my screen. Just going to pull up uh, essentially our cross reference. Um, if we have any issues with that, I'll just revert back to uh, <clears throat> um, to the um, to my own uh, um, to my own desktop here. Alrighty. So let's just go grab. Um, whichever, you know, 7x36 uh, here. Um, that's one side going back to here. Let's go grab 8.x, say, um, and let's actually have those as separate windows so it'll be easier to browse around. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go uh, in the implementation of the system service um, itself. So that's, um, and obviously you, it's easier um, to just review the video if you um, want to figure out the paths again. So framework space, uh, services, core, and then Java, com, Android, server. I'm going to go for lights, uh, the light system service going here. So this here is the implementation of the um, lights system service. All right, this is what controls most of the lights that you have on a device, uh, blinking lights, backlight, whatever it is. That's kind of like the common interface for all those. Um, and I'm going to go grab the same thing with um, 8.x, so uh, same kind of path, frameworks, base, um, core, Java, com, Android, server, and uh, going to... No, I actually went to the wrong direction here. So frame, the services core, not frame space core. Can, it, it's a very confusing layout, but um, similar directory names, different different uses completely. So here again, under lights, I've got again the lights service. Now, um, as I usually explain to people, if you want to um, if you want to understand how a system service operates, one of the things that you want to do is look at, at, at look at how it starts. And so we're just going to go take a look at the constructor of this class because that's how that system service initializes itself. So light service, <coughs> uh, let's go looking for lights service. If I type it well, I should find it. There we go. Here's the constructor for 8.x. And if I go looking for the constructor under um, 7x, it looks a bit like this, all right? So here's, uh, let me actually show them to you side by side so we can kind of compare. So you can see here that I've got the, um, on the, um, the right-hand side, I've got essentially the one from 8x, and on the left-hand side, I've got the one from 7x. Let me just catch up with the question here. So. <clears throat> Uh, from an OTA update standpoint, how does Google manage AOSP updates for vendor-created service HALs, which would be not be in vanilla AOSP? Um, should those packages be in a separate vendor OTA package? Um, that's a great question. I, I don't have a good answer for this at this point. Um, uh, that's still something that I'm myself trying to figure out. Um, and uh, I'm, again, you know, kind of waiting to see how um, Google is going to manage uh, upcoming OTAs because um, I haven't seen any documentation that answers that specific question. Um, if again, uh, at, per the previous uh, feedback, if you see anything that in the documentation that um, answers that, uh, then please post it in the comments. I'm happy to look at that, uh, but I haven't seen that uh, being uh, explained uh, at this point yet. <clears throat> so um, notice that in the 7x version here, what we've got is um, essentially a call to, I mean, this, the, they look the same except for one thing. There's a call to this thing called init native, all right? Um, and if you follow that init native there, uh, you will see that it actually is calling into the C++ layer, all right? So if I go uh, further down here in 7x, 
you'll see that init native here is being declared as private static native long init native. Um, and if you follow what happens there, and I'll show that to you uh, in a minute, you'll see that um, the C++ code in this case matches what I showed you in the earlier diagram, which is we're going to talk to the HAL layer and fetch a HAL module. So if I go back here um, onto the diagram, what we've got here, what we've been looking at here um, is the C++ code here. I'm sorry, the Java side, um, uh, Java side um, of the uh, system service calling into JNI over to the C++ side. And what you will see in a second is that that C++ side is going to load that module. So going back to 7x, so um, again, I'm just kind of keeping 8.x here on the side for a second. If I go to uh, 7x and open the JNI implementation, so going here under JNI into um, Lights Service, here is the init native that matches the previous um, declaration in Java. And what the uh, init native uh, does here is an hwget module. So essentially, the system service code itself is going and fetching an SO file and loading it in the address space of, um, of the system service. Um, and essentially, the um, the in the case of um, in the case of the um, um, uh, um, just give me one second here. I have um, one uh, hiccup. Um, um, okay. Um, so in the case of 8.x what you've got essentially is the light service is not doing any of that. Um, it's not doing an init module. Um, it's essentially just going through and uh, doing whatever it would have done in the past, but without the init module. So if I put them back together um, side by side, you've got the light service here and the um, uh, light service on the other side, 8.x, 7x, no init native being found here in the 8.x version. So 8.x is doing something different, all right? Um, and it's interesting to look at what it does and, and how that's different. So um, going back to 7x for a second here, you'll notice that the glue between the Java side and the C++ side is uh, three functions or three methods. So they have an init native, they have a finalized native, and they have a set light native. In the case of the 8.x version, you'll see that essentially here we've got just got set light native. So we've only got one call this time, all right? And, and so obviously, if uh, if you've done this walkthrough before, um, or, or or you've attended some of our previous presentations, I kind of showed you what the how this kind of works. Um, the question is, okay, so how are they doing it today? So why they, don't they need to load the HAL module? So looking at set light native um, is going to have to be the thing that we go to next because in the case of 8.x, you know, that's the only call that we have going downwards from um, the system service onto the C++ side. So let's go take a look at this set light native in, um, in 8.x. So if I go here, um, sorry, I kind of put my window somewhere else apparently. Um, where did this go? No, go back to the other workspace. All right. So going back to JNI side in 8x, the light service. So you'll notice here that um, we've got the set light native being declared uh, pretty much like in the other cases uh, with JNI. You've got two parameters in addition to the uh, whatever number of parameters you were using. So um, providing a handle essentially to the virtual machine and the class we're operating on. The first thing you'll notice here um, is that in the set light native, it calls this uh, associate uh, method that's part of a, of a class, all right? And if you do a bit of code walkthrough here, um, and I don't want to go too heavily into this, but I, I still want to walk you through uh, the major parts. If you look for associate, what you'll find is that there's a class being declared at the top of this um, of the C++ file, which has essentially, so this is called a class light hal. Uh, it's got essentially a, um, a dissociate and an associate. And if you look at the associate, what you'll see is that it's, it does a lookup of iLight colon colon get service. All right. Um, and that's the important part here because that's the call to Heidel. Essentially, what 
the system service is now doing is talking to Heidel and saying, okay, go get me a handle to an implementation of this iLight thing, okay? And once it has done that, if it, if it actually is able to find something, um, then it actually uh, is, is able to move forward. Otherwise, if it doesn't get anything, it says unable to get iLight interface. Um, and essentially at this point, you know, we don't have a handle to a system, uh, to, to a um, Heidel implementation to actually talk to. So uh, going again back to my diagram here, uh, this is this uh, this is the you know right hand side of this dividing line where I say it's about you know how Treble does things and what we're seeing here is the system service now talking to a Heidel definition, no longer talking to an actual module here. Uh, we're actually talking to Heidel definition and asking Heidel to go get us something underneath here. Okay, um, and so the question is, what is that that we operating? And so uh, in the past, uh, usually when I would walk people through uh, the implementation of the glue that's underneath the system service, my next stop would usually be the hardware directory at the top level and then the header files for the various um, HAL implementations or HAL definitions. So if I go at the top level here under uh, uh, 7x and go under lib hardware, include hardware, I'm going to have here the various header files uh, for defining the HALs, and one of them is going to be lights.h. So here's lights.h, and essentially uh, it's just a regular C++ file, C++ header file, with at the end of it uh, some struct definitions, you know, defining, um, telling us, you know, what is the contract between the system service and the HAL module, all right? That's not what Heidel uses, and that's really where it starts to get interesting. So the interesting thing is to look at how the contract now is implemented with with Heidel. So let's go take a peek at, at 8.x. So going back here to my uh, sources for 8.x, going back to the top level, uh, under hardware, you'll notice that lib hardware still exists, okay, same, same directory, and the uh, content of it is pretty much the same as before. So if I go under lib hardware, include hardware, I still have the same headers, and in fact, if I pull up here lights.h, um, it's, you know, pretty much a you know, a header file like the ones we saw before with, you know, set light and all that kind of stuff. However, one thing that is interesting here is if I go back to hardware at the top level of hardware, uh, there is now an additional directory that's relevant for Heidel, and that is interfaces, all right? If I go under interfaces, I'm now going to find essentially a directory that starts with hardware types. So at the top level of interfaces, what I'm seeing here is different hardware types. So uh, graphics, uh, light, uh, you know, power, you name it. All right. Um, so this is the um, core of at least the definitions of, um, of, uh, of Heidel. And if I go under light, as um, you know, kind of just to explore that, you'll see that now I have a 2.0 directory. Right, so I have a directory that has a version number. And if I go back and just look around, just to kind of see what the other ones look like, um, sorry, if I go under power, you see I've got 1.0, 1.1. .1. Um, if I go under um, graphics, uh, in this case, I have subdirectories with names. So this is a case where we say, okay, we have a subsystem that has several other things underneath it. Um, and so in this case, I've got, say, for example, Composer, and then we find again, you know, these version number directories. Um, moving back up to the top here, um, going to some other stuff like uh, sensors. So we got, I just got one zero uh, TV. I've got um, subdirectories and again, presumably some other version numbers. So obviously at this point, given that 8.x is kind of like the early uh, um, existence of Heidel and Treble, we don't have a lot of version numbers, but presumably moving the forward, we're going to have many other uh, subdirectories with different version numbers. So let's go explore what this 2.0 uh, directory has for us with regards to, to lights. So if I go under light 2.0, um, what I have at a first level um, is a few make files, um, subdirectories, and what looks like a new type of file, which is .hal, all right? And these are the Heidel definitions. Those .hal files are the Heidel definitions. And I'm, I'm going to show you those in a bit more detail, but I still want to go back and show you around the other subdirectories, show you what this looks like. So if I go under interfaces again and I go under power, um, let's say 10, 
I'm gonna find other HAL files. They look like this, ipowerhal, types.hal, and so on, all right? Um, and uh, if I go out to, um, say, um, sensors, as I did before, 1.0, I've got us as well, you know, .hal files, .hal files, all right? One thing that you will notice um, is that in most of these directories, there is at least two files. Usually there's a types.hal and the i hardware type.hal file. The types file essentially serves to replace a lot of the definitions that were um, declared in the C++ header. So if I go back to 7x here um, and I show you the header file for um, the lights uh, definition, which is oh, this one here. So you can see that at the top of the file here, I have a bunch of defines, right? And these defines here are made essentially using, um, you know, regular C++ semantics or C semantics. And then I have struct definitions down there. Um, and so some of them are just, it's actually structures with actual content. And some of them are actually function pointers. I mean, this is kind of like a, um, a, a hack onto, um, uh, onto the way things are done here. But we're using structs to fit function pointers, which are later kind of set by the HAL modules uh, underneath. So um, this stuff here that we have that is classically declared in a header file is now declared differently, all right? And it's declared in those HAL files. So this becomes an interface and everything else that you see here becomes part of the types.hal file. So if I go back here and I open say the lights um, HAL files, let's go back to interfaces into lights and I look at this, let's look at iLight and let's look at types. So in the case of iLight, it looks a bit like a AIDL file, all right? You can see here that uh, we've got essentially um, an interface iLight that, and this package declaration, that would have looked you know, almost up to this point as, as a regular AIDL file and probably um, you know, uh, um, part of it would, would work straight out EADL. Where it gets different here is what you see below. So you can see here that I've got um, entries being defined in my interface, except they don't have return values, all right? Whereas AIDL files actually have return values for every one of the calls listed. In this case, there's a generates statement, all right? So generates status, generates vector type types. Um, and here's my set light. Remember that set light that we saw in the header file? Uh, that was uh, being declared as a function pointer. Here it is again, but now part of a HIDL interface. And then if I go into types file, I now have essentially a uh, enum with uh, a number of things being declared. I have another enum and so on and so forth. And so obviously there's a proper semantic to these files. And if you want to kind of explore um, the space that you have, the semantic space that you have of things that you can declare and, um, you know, uh, the limitations of it, what you want to do is you want to go to uh, the source.android.com website uh, in the Heidel documentation. So if I go here under architecture, um, Heidel general, um, or in fact, um, yeah, interfaces and packages, I don't know, this is just the, uh, the actual, not the declarations themselves. Um, data types, this is what I wanted to show you here. So we got data types here, which shows us essentially the various uh, declarations that we have, and here's actually an interface being declared. Um, and um, if you go here in the C++ section, you'll show they'll show you how to use those data types. So the Heidel type, the corresponding C++ type, and the header file. And of, of course, if you go to the Java side, they'll have something similar here. We'll show you the um, the Heidel type. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, prefer the below. Okay, um, or the header back there. Can't remember anymore. Uh, okay, well they just they don't have a, the same kind of uh, the table for it, um, but they, they do kind of have the detail of how to use them. So essentially, if you're curious as to the format that we got there uh, and how to use it, then refer back to the uh, refer back to the uh, to the definitions that are provided in the source.android.com website. Now, this essentially is what is going to be used by the system service, or more aptly, what gets generated um, uh, from this. And so essentially, there are some tools that are found in the EOSP that will take these descriptions and actually generate code that can be used 
um, in, in various parts. And they have essentially here um, documentation uh, on, t in, in, on their website as to how this actually works. So you've got, I think it's the other link right below it here. So, or no, actually, sorry, because this is version, this is a language specific. So the one that we are looking for is in C++, not this one, I believe the one right below it. There we go. Okay, so this kind of shows you um, how things are generated. So you take the HAL file, run it through Heidelgen, and it generates a bunch of files which are then used by the uh, client and you know server implementation for implementing both sides of the um, of the Heidel equation. <clears throat> um, so going back to my uh, source view here, you'll notice that in addition to the HAL files, I've got BP files and MK files. And the way this works is um, if you were declaring your own Heidel, you would come here and you would add a .hal, and then you run a few commands and it generates those make files for you, and also a default, a shim default implementation. So, so if you go back to the documentation here that I have online, for example, in the C++ side, um, there is a bunch of commands down here, right here. So this set of commands here um, is, is what you would run to actually generate a default implementation. So essentially here we're doing um, Heidelgen, we're saying we want the default implementation of this interface, whatever that interface is, in this case NFC, and then essentially we say um, Heidelgen and then uh, generate the Android BP implementation, which essentially is the make files for building that um, C++ implementation that we just uh, added right there. And you can see this essentially uh, being done, if you look under default, you've got under default this um, light CPP and light.h, and those essentially would be generated uh, by, uh, by running those tools, all right? Um, and, and we'll see how time goes. Uh, maybe I can show you a demo of that, um, of that a bit later. So um, this here, this default implementation that you see there, there happens to be the other side of the diagram that I showed you earlier. So going back to my diagram here, what I had shown you is the system service doing an associate or a get service over the Heidel interface to get a default implementation. And that lights implementation I just showed you right there is actually that default implementation that we are seeing, all right? Um, and so um, if you look at what happens on the other side, how this works. So if I open up that default implementation, that lights.cpp, so the lights.cpp um, essentially has the implementation of the interface. So remember, we had a set light in the interface definition. Here's the set light, all right? When you run, run, when you run the Heidel gen, obviously, it's not going to generate the, con the content of those functions. But it is going to generate all the um, header includes and uh, the actual signatures of the calls that you see here, all right? And the other thing that it, it will also uh, at least generate, I think, believe, um, I believe by default it comments it out, um, is this Heidel fetch. Okay, this is essentially going to be necessary for um, um, the, the system service to essentially load this, um, uh, this implementation in its, um, in its address space. Um, and in this case, the Heidel fetch um, is what gets called when the get service is called on the other side. So, in other words, if I go back to the C system service, or the C side of the system service, um, which is one of these thumbnails. I get lost when I do this too often. Um, here, in the associate, remember that associate that we had on the system service? We had an I light get service. So you're gonna have to trust me on this, but when this get lights, when this get service gets called, what ends up happening is this idle fetch I light is get, getting called, right? And if you walk th through this, you'll see it does a get light device, all right? And this get light device is implemented right above. And so what get light device is going to do is an HWGET module. So we're now doing the same thing um, that we had before, but we're doing it in the default implementation. And this goes to um, this diagram here. So essentially here we've got a default implementation that does the same lookup that was done before, all right? Um, and now it's actually loading the module and talking to the lower layers, except now the C system service is no longer tied to that header file. It's tied to a Heidel definition, all right, which allows the C++, uh, sorry, the system server writer not to actually depend on the 
um, headers that can change from one version to the next, but rather a standardized or essentially a uh, canonical reference of a specific signature for lights. And if you look at the C++ side again, so if I go into this box, the system service C++, so that's just going back a layer above. Um, if I go into the C++ implementation, um, you will notice essentially that here, um, it, it actually is referring to specific version numbers. So it says, okay, I'm using version 2.0. So the assumption is that uh, moving forward into the future, um, they will continue in the C++ sides or the lower sides of the system services to refer to, say, version 2.0. And so long as they, they continue kind of supporting version 2.0, uh, then the um, Heidel implementations that were done for that 2.0 will continue to function uh, moving, uh, moving forward. So um, afterwards, I mean, underneath it, um, the underside, if I kind of continued moving downwards, the rest of it is pretty much the same as it was before. So if you had seen how HAL modules are implemented in the past, um, then, then this is pretty much the same thing. Um, there's nothing changed. The only difference here is the glue that's happening now from the system service downwards, instead of being tied to a HAL definition header, we are now tied to a HIDL definition, which is those .HAL files. Um, and from those .HAL files, we're going downward uh, into, in the initial case at least, or the simple case, we're going straight into an old implementation of a HAL through um, through one of those uh, through th one of those headers. All right. Um, so that's the case where we're in the same process, um, and hence, you know, uh, as you can see above here, uh, this SP, so uh, same process slash pass through. We're just passing through, um, you know, kind of just pushing the calls downwards. The other uh, scenario is where we're doing this binderized call. So essentially we're calling into a remote process that is then going to have this implementation. All right. And this also is found uh, for the lights under the same directories on 8.x. So if I go back here onto, um, into the same directory where I was, this uh, uh, interface is like 2.0 default. Uh, you'll see now there's a service CPP. All right. And uh, this service CPP here actually is implementing that remote service that, uh, that I just talked about. Uh, let me just catch up to the question here. So um, each HIDL module um, implements local uh, initRC init to start HAL service. How, uh, now what is the order of these initRC files um, are taken and can, uh, can I tell init to start my HADL at earliest uh, as it is much, uh, much more critical. Uh, yes, okay, so I, um, I will come back to that in a, in a second here. Um, uh, let me just finish off with this and, and I'll get back to the initialization of the HADL service. So as this is running as a service, right, essentially this is running um, remotely, right, what, we're, what we've got is, is essentially a main function. So this is kind of like an independent program that has to start at startup. And you can see here that it then calls default pass-through service implementation iLight. So in other words, what we're doing here is taking that, um, that bottom part of the stack that we had that I just showed you, okay, and then just shoving it into another process. That's transparent to the system service. And that's a, that, I find that to be very cool myself. So essentially the system service doesn't need to change how it talks underneath, it just does this get service um, that I showed you um, in, the C, in, in its C++ side. And it doesn't matter if it's same, it's same process or remote process, makes no difference, it's using the same calls. That's pretty nifty. Um, now, with regards to the question that was uh, asked a minute ago, so with regards to essentially, okay, now I want to understand how this starts because um, if you are familiar a bit with with the startup of Android, you know that you know there's an init process and it's got you know uh, RC files that configure its startup. And so the question is, how does that fit this fit in the configuration of uh, or the startup of the system? Uh, you can see here there's an RC file uh, that's that's being provided. And in this case, essentially it says service light blah 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 class HAL user system group uh, system. So essentially here this class HAL um, uh, the, the, the tagging of class HAL is what's going to define when this starts. Um, and if you want to know when HAL class services are started, then you'd have to go and look at the main RC file um, that, that uh, Android has. So if I go back all the way to the top here, um, I believe I remember seeing it in there, but I could be mistaken. So if I go back to system core, 
root dear let me go grab the main rc file and i believe at the end of um there okay so at the end of the startup where it does on boot all right you've got essentially here a class start hal so at this point essentially every uh, process that is um, that is started uh, sorry every hal that implements that is implemented as a remote service is going to get started if it is part of this class hal so if the question is okay i want to be even before that for for whatever reason that uh, that, that that is uh, maybe what i need to do here is have a custom rc file that is board specific and for those of you who are familiar with the semantics remember that you've got here up here these um, various RC files that are included at um, at startup by the, in the main RC file. And so presumably you've got a board specific RC file somewhere in there. And there was no, there's nothing stopping you from in that RC file saying start and then the name of the HAL implementation RC file that you want to see started uh, uh, in startup. So for example, I could have uh, maybe not early in it. That'd be that. I'd rather not. But you know, maybe in the, on in it, I could have uh, you know start you know my HAL. That would allow me to actually preempt uh, the rest of the startup here, and or at least be very early on. Okay, so that's co completely doable. But it's just you know by default, they all they all the HAL uh, services get started essentially in, in in one fell swoop. And in fact, uh, kind of since I'm talking about this, let me kind of just show it to you on the device here. I've got an emulator running. Uh, in the background here so if I shell into that device and I just do a you know plain PS here uh, there okay um, and I scroll up a bit you'll see I've got all these HAL services that have started all right um, and and all of those ones are presumably implementing um, Heidel uh, um, you know, uh, services which are called by system services, whether they be afterwards passed through or actually binderized implementations. All right. Um, so that's for essentially the um, most of the glue here that we've got. There was one last thing I want to show you here. Um, so you've got essentially default implementation C files, which are uh, can be used either pass through or through a service. We've got an RC file that says how to start that service if it we're using a service, and then we have an Android MK here, uh, which is used to actually build uh, this this uh, this uh, Heidel implementation. Uh, and what you'll notice actually also in 8.x, and uh, obviously it's kind of like not the topic of this presentation, but still interesting, um, is they've started uh, uh, moving to more BP files than than MK files. Um, and so if you do use the Heidel gen command that they have on the website to uh, generate a default implementation, uh, it's actually going to generate for you, um, I believe, uh, a BP file because that's what's requested in, in, in that command. All right. Um, one other thing that you have to be aware of uh, in terms of glue is because essentially, um, going back to my diagram here, um, you know, we have a choice of being here, here, or here with Heidel. All right. Um, and so one thing that you need to do is tell your system which one of these are you actually using, all right? Um, and you do that through um, a, a new manifest file they have for devices. So if you go under device, and let me show that to you as an example here with the emulator. So if I go all the way to the top here under um, device uh, generic goldfish, you'll see here there's a manifest XML. And so this goes with the uh, this goes with the Vintef stuff that we were talking about uh, in in yesterday's presentation. So you'll notice here that it says essentially it has got all these um, HAL things, and essentially here we've got uh, uh, for lights. Um, this is the graphics mapper composer power, or I passed it and I didn't notice. All right, where's the lights again? Or it doesn't have one? No, it doesn't actually. Mm. Okay, it doesn't matter. Then I'll show you another one as an example here. Um, here, for example, let's see. Um, let's say you've got here um, graphics allocator, right? So you'll notice that it says your transport HW binder. So this transport statement is then what allows the system to know which uh, you know which kind of transport are we using. In this case. Hardware binder means we're, we're in a binderized service. So in other words, we are either in configuration three or configuration number four. Whereas in the other case of, for example, here, the graphics mapper, you'll notice here it is transport is pass through, which means we're either essentially here 
uh, we're actually just here. We're essentially just we're passing through the same process. We're not in a remote process. So you have to also tell that to uh, uh, to, to your manifest file to tell it what to do with this. And um, other boards actually ha have the same thing as well. So for example, I can go here up to device, um, say Lenaro High Key, which is the um, high key board supported by Lenaro. There's a manifest file right here. And uh, I believe this one, no, this one neither doesn't have actually um, lights, but whatever. Um, same kind of setup here, graphics, you got pass through and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, you know, it tells you the name of the, 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 I, the mapper and so on. And um, much like a lot of other things have to be built or specified in MK files, you'll notice that the actual MK files for those um, devices actually also refer to um, the hardware implementations that need to be impl uh, implemented or built, sorry. So it says your product packages, you know, hardware audio impl, uh, audio effect impl, and so on. And if I go back to the, uh, this is my, where's my emulator again? Okay, getting lost in my thumbnails. Sorry, give me one second. Where's my emulator? Goldfish, going once, going twice. Okay, let me open it up again then. Um, if I go back to device, under generic goldfish um, and I look under the um, no actually this one's all the way to the top I believe this one's not here this one is under build target product and then emulator da, 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 da. emulator MK and so we should have here here we go so our you know all these impulse and services so it says here you know we're using this impulse and the service. We're using this impulse, or this service, this impulse. It's just, you know, whatever, kind of different orders, but the same kind of logic, all right? So there's a bunch of pieces here that you have to have in place uh, to allow, essentially, the, um, uh, the, the uh, system service um, to actually talk to the proper high-level implementation that, you are, that you're looking for. All right. So how do we uh, implement those things? How do I go about actually adding my own um, my own HAL def HIDL definition? Sorry. So let me show you this uh, as an example on my side, and I've kind of already done that in the in, the, in this uh, tree that I'm using as an example. So I'm just going to kind of switch it out and then show you adding it back. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to just got it out. So let's copy um, hardware interfaces. I'll process, put that on my desktop. Let me go in there and clean it up and show you how this works. So if I go under, uh, so what, if, okay, first things first. What I did is under interfaces, I added a new type of interface. I just called it um, Operasys, okay? This obviously is not gonna be found the default USB. This is my hacking. Um, if I go under here and let me just, um, uh, first of all, let me kind of just remove this, uh, this Android BP. So I just have essentially a version number, 2.0. That's how we would start with. Um, and going under 2.0, what I'm gonna do is let me clean up everything here and just leave essentially the HAL files. So here, what I would have done is just have, you know, those HAL files. And if I go back, you know, one directory in case you're not, uh, you, you wanna see it in full, I've got a 2 HAL file. So um, maybe a bit tiny here, but essentially what you're seeing is that I've got an interface called iOperasys, okay? Um, it is version uh, 2.0. Um, there seemed to have been a glitch here on the live stream. Sorry about that if you uh, uh, had a, a second gap. Um, now, the interface definition here declares three things, read, write, and test. And you'll notice here that I've got these generates statements. I don't have return values. I've got generates result versus a uh, comma string. This is interesting. I'll come back to that in a second. I have a regenerate result. It generates in 32 value ret. Okay. Um, what's interesting about the generates statements versus AIDL files, which have return values is generate statements can actually have multiple uh, returns. All right. In this case, I've got two things returning, not just a single one. Um, and um, you can also have these things one way. So if, if it is, if it's blocking, then it's if if it is if it's blocking, then it's not one way. So um, if you sorry, if you don't use one way, then it's blocking. So in other words, I'm going to wait for the um, uh, other side of this to return to me before I can actually continue. If it's one way, then essentially I make the call and that's it. Um, and in this case, I'm generating two results. I don't have the bandwidth here to walk you through 
how this is handled, but let's just say that with the Heidel stuff, you can actually generate multiple things, and that's pretty uh, pretty interesting. So this actually, um, if you uh, if you had seen some of the previous examples that I had um, distributed in a number of different ways, I, I think I have an example of an old implementation on, on GitHub that uses header files, um, and the appendix in, in, in my uh, book actually has the same kind of thing, but in a header file, because obviously Treble did not exist at that point in time. So I'm just kind of retaking the same thing, but now use it, using Heidel to implement it. And then I also have a types hal file, and the types hal file essentially just defines a result as being either OK or permission denied, and also uh, declares the size in bytes here as being a uint32t, uh, all right? So just by adding this, all right, I can just go on the command line now and um, have the AOSP generate a bunch of things for me without me doing any sort of effort, all right? So first of all, let me have the AOSP generate for me some build files, some uh, some files to actually get this to, to all kind of compile properly. So I'm going to go back all the way to interfaces. Um, and in interfaces, there is a, sh a shell script called uh, update make files, all right? And I'm just going to run this, all right? I'm going to run this update make files thing. So let's run that. And essentially, uh, if I go under Operasys, oh, sorry, um, oh, right, uh, I did not, okay, this can't work. I would need to build the NV setup SH and then lunch first, that would actually help. And now let me go under interfaces, I'm um, sorry, hardware interfaces again. And let's do update make files. Okay, now it's actually working. So it's going to go through uh, all of these uh, various interfaces and generate make files where necessary. So give it a second here. And now if I go under uh, Operasys, there we go. I have an Android BP. Okay, this was generated by the AOSP. I didn't do anything here. All right, and if I go under 2.0, I now have essentially an Android BP and an Android MK. Th those, again, are also generated automatically. I, I didn't do anything for this, all right? Um, and I used to have a default implementation here, remember? Um, I used to have um, a default implementation with possibly a default impulse for, for this thing. So how would I go about generating that? So to do this, I, I can refer back to the instructions that we have here um, on the source.android.com website. So let me uh, export those things. So if I do this, um, and so obviously the package is not um, hardware NFC, this is going to be hardware operasys, this is mine. And the default location uh, is going to also be different, so export this. This is not correct, let me just fix that. So interfaces and 2.0 operasys, all right? So now essentially I've, uh, okay, echo dollar sign lock, echo dollar sign package okay that's these are the things that I'm passing off to the commands that I'm gonna about about to launch all right and um, the next thing I can do here is um, just uh, okay so here they do a make Heidelgen uh, to build the Heidelgen tool presumably because you know they just want to make sure that you have it available I've already built this AOSP so this Heidelgen is now in my path I don't have to do this uh, uh, just kind of like as a uh, uh, as an aside, notice that they're using a dash J64. So <laughs> presumably the person at Google that's running this has uh, like a 32 way uh, CPU, the so 32 cores uh, on that machine. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty fascinating. <laughs> All right, um, I wish I had that. Uh, now let's actually uh, generate the default implementation. Okay, so I'm going to use this Heidel Gen command right here, copy and paste. Okay. Uh, do this, and presumably now I have a default um, directory. Um, no, actually, I should. Oh, sorry, I have to run this from top level. My mistake. Uh, C root, right? Let's run this again. Hydrogen this, go to hardware interfaces, uh, operasys 2.0, and now I have a default directory. I, I didn't create this. The AOSP created it for me yet again. If I go here, I've now got a CPP file and a header file. Again, generated automatically for me. But I don't have make files, all right? So let's go ahead and get those created. So if I go back to the top here and I do this um, Heidelgen 
and launch this instead. Um, and I go back to hardware interfaces, opersys uh, 2.0. And if I go under default, I now have an Android BP that has been created for me. Okay, so I've got everything that I need now to actually get the AOSP um, to recognize this new Heidel and actually um, um, actually uh, implement it. So if I open this up and let's just go ahead and open the CPP file, you'll notice that it has essentially my read, write, and test as they were described in the .hal file. They don't contain anything and they kind of kind of explicitly tell you to do implement. Okay, you have to do something here. All right. Um, and you'll notice a bit further down here that we've got um, this uh, this Heidel fetch, but it's commented out. You can just essentially kind of uncomment that and implement uh, an HWGET module if you're doing some legacy stuff, as as I just showed you uh, before in the in the lights example. Okay. Um, and then if you take a look at the uh, BP file here, it essentially has what is needed to actually build this, and it tells you the name of this mod build module is that. Uh, these are the shell libraries being used, uh, and so on. And, and you may have to tweak this. So, for example, it doesn't include liblog. And if you're doing any sort of logging that goes to the logcat, you're going to want to add, you know, liblog to the list of shared libraries here um, that uh, that are included. All right. Um, and the same thing if you're using, in, if you're doing an HWGET module, if you're loading a legacy module, then you're going to have to add here under the shared libraries something like lib hardware. Um, so that it knows that it has to also give you that. Otherwise, you're going to add the call, and then when you're going to compile, it's going to say, I'm sorry, I don't know what HWGET module is. Um, so that's kind of like the basics of, um, you know, kind of adding a Heidel and, you know, toying, out, toying around with the Heidel gen tool and how it generates um, a lot of the glue for you. Um, one additional thing that I wanted to show you around, let me just go back to my... Uh, to my slides here, I kind of just uh, put myself some bullet points as a reminder. So, oh yeah, and by the way, if you want to do the walkthrough again, the uh, the slides here have kind of the detail of, of the same thing I was I was just uh, going around and, and showing you. Um, so yeah, add a new interface, use the update uh, make files, use Heidel Gen, uh, tweak the implementation, and add the product in the manifest. Of course, yeah. So uh, you know, remember those manifest files I was showing you that had all these um, these Heidel things in there. So these HAL entries, uh, you're gonna ha want to come in here and add a HAL entry for whatever it is that you that you just added as well, because because that's gonna be required. Um, and then finally. Um, if I kind of show you a bit uh, of some additional tools and kind of like show you around where things are, are found. So um, if you look on the device, so if I go back and shell on the device, shell into my device as I was, there's now an LS HAL tool. All right. And LS HAL, LSHL, one word, uh, is then going to show you all the HIDLs that are there. Um, and, you know, um, who's using them. So um, first of all, who's implementing them? Who are the clients? Um, so the uh, actual interface that you've got associated with it. Um, and you'll notice here that I've got myself here a, because I've already done this before, you'll see uh, that I've got this Opersys, um, you, you know, um, uh, uh, HAL uh, or Heidel, sorry, that, that is now available as part of the, um, of the other um, Heidels which are present on, on this device, all right? So that's one thing. And you also notice just kind of like browsing really quickly here um, that you've got a lot of things that are found under vendor because that's the actual implementation of it, all right? So um, the library that glues the system service to the actual implementation, that usually is going to be find, found under system lib or lib64, uh, presumably on a 64-bit system. If you look up here, you'll see that I've got all these Android foobar.so, okay? Uh, these are the actual, um, you know, glue between uh, the system service and the actual layer that's underneath it, which is a Heidel implementation, whatever, uh, whatever it is. Um, and you'll notice also that uh, if I go under vendor, uh, lib64 uh, hw, uh, no, ll does not exist, true. Um, what you'll see here is I've got all these impulse, all right? Um, so Android, whatever it is, dash impl, dash impl, dash impl. Um, and in this case, my impl uh, does an HWGET module, uh, at least in my case. Uh, so I have still an, an SO file here that gets loaded um, to actually um, talk to the hardware that is underneath, all right? 
Um, so that's kind of like what you've got on the um, on the device. Not sure if I forgot anything else. Uh, processes. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so I had already shown you the processes and the fact that I've got some um, Heidel, Heidel's running as a service. Um, what you can also see is if you go looking at the address space of uh, any process, you'll see if it has any sort of mapped, um, you know, a same process Heidel implementation. So if I look here at the list of processes and I go looking for the system server process, uh, just kind of really quickly glancing at this. Okay, 15, 1540. So if I do cat proc 1540 uh, maps grep, um, let's just go grep hardware. All right. So you can see here that the um, system service process has got all these um, glue, um, the glue for the various um, Heidel, Heidels here, along with the impulse in some cases. So you can see here graphics mapper impul because this is the same process. Um, this is the same process Heidel, whereas the other ones are not necessarily the same process, but, but remote process. And I should have here as well, um, given the example that I'm using, um, can't see it right away. Yeah, so <clears throat> I've also got, uh, in this case, I'm using my, I've got my uh, Opera service here, uh, or Opera um, you know, hardware implementation here as well, uh, along along with the other ones um, in, in the list, all right? So that's for the process map, file locations. Yeah, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it uh, in terms of the, uh, in terms of what I wanted to show you here. So that kind of, um, you know, goes through much of what I wanted to explain. I mean, if I go back just to um, emphasize, I think this is probably one of the most important diagrams that uh, uh, that we've got in this presentation, which it kind of shows you or highlights the differences between the previous way things were done and after treble the different configurations that we have. As I mentioned, you know, if you've got legacy implementations that you want to move over to a Heidel version, Heidel version of Android, so presumably 8.x and above, um, then you're in this, this is kind of like the simplest path where you just take your old module and you kind of shove it underneath the default impulse, whatever it is it's got in under interfaces. Um, presumably, if you want to kind of have more isolation to, to kind of uh, cut the implementation from the system service, you can then have it housed as a separate service. And in the case of the system service, it really won't matter. It's just a question of configuring the manifest file to tell it which one you're using. And then finally, um, you've got the fully binderized thing. So ultimately, once you've moved to this um, way of doing things where the Heidel interface is the contract between your system service and the actual implementation, then you can forego this HAL, this HAL module loading and those header files all together. And so long as you stick to that HAL definition, you're good to go. All right. Um, there's one last thing I kind of didn't show you, and, and, and I just want to make sure that that's clear as well. So um, if I go back to the interfaces directory, let me I just, just grab any of these. It doesn't really matter. So hardware interfaces. Uh, remember, I told you that under some uh, directories, um, you know, you, you uh, uh, not some directories, but all the directories ultimately have version number directories. And notice here that I've got a 1, 0, and then 1, 1. So there are some basic rules with regards to uh, the various uh, minor numbers and, and major numbers. And, and essentially, the idea there is if I'm incrementing the minor numbers, so if I'm going from 1.0 to 1.1, then the rule is I can't actually change existing signatures, all right? Um, so whatever, say for example, in this case, power, let us let me go grab the one from 1.0, uh, iPowerHAL. So iPowerHAL here defined essentially uh, a set interactive, a power hint, a set feature, and a get platform uh, stats. 1.1 can only add to this. So um, if I go grab 1.1 and I open this one, this HAL, you'll notice that first the first thing it says is extends 1.0, right? So we're inheriting from that previous declaration. And the idea there is that on minor numbers, you cannot change the signature of what was already declared. You can only add to it. You can extend. You can add more calls underneath it, but you can't uh, change, say, for example, the, the signature of set feature. That will always remain signed in this fashion. If I go to a major number, so if I go to 2.0, and obviously in this case, I don't have a um, you know, a power 2.0. There's only 1.0 and 1.1. One, one. 
but in version 2.0, I could completely break this and go in a completely different direction, all right? And that will work. Um, so keep that in mind as well in terms of these uh, version numbers. Um, how to talk between Java Heidel and C++ Heidel, any problem? Um, so I guess we're talking here about uh, implementations. Um, so I haven't tested this myself, but my assumption, my operating assumption has been that um, I could have essentially Java on one side and C++ on the other side, and it, and it shouldn't matter because the contract really is the Heidel definition. So presumably I could have one side being Java, the other side being C++, and, and, and it should still work. Um, and in fact, that's, you know, at least uh, based on the documentation that I'm seeing, that's, that's, that's uh, uh, they have the documentation for both sides, the C++ and the Java, and the Java side, all right? Um, so I think that's pretty much it on my side for most of this. Um, I will stick around here for taking questions, um, either, um, you know, if you're on, on, on ch uh, YouTube chat or, or elsewhere. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to take them uh, in the um, uh, in the following minutes here before we sign off. And, and yes, there's this uh, the uh, well, two things actually. So first of all, I'll definitely check out the the uh, feedback that was given there with regards to um, with regards to the use of um, the um, the Heidel for vendor services. Um, I'm curious about that. Um, uh, again, if you have a pointer to that information uh, in in Google's documentation, I'd love to see that. Um, and the other oh, there was a question yesterday regarding um, whether Spectre and Meltdown fixes would be rolled back uh, into 4.4. Um, the feedback I got from my contact, <laughs> which shall remain anonymous. Um, is that uh, it depends uh, on the kernel that you got, and there is an entry in SysFS now that shows you the vulnerabilities. So you want to go check those. Uh, that directory, see, uh, you know, if you don't have it, then you are vulnerable. Otherwise, then refer to what the, the directory says. Um, but and, and I think the, the, the answer was uh, it depends on which part of Spectre and, and, and Meltdown were, uh, were being addressed. Okay. Um, any training on VNDK planned? Um, that's a good question. Um, it, it really, I mean, so I, I do these really de based on the requests that I receive. Um, so essentially, um, it, it, it will depend on, on the feedback that I get. So there was clearly a demand for uh, information about trouble, and that's why I took the time to do the uh, live stream that I ran yesterday. Um, and uh, Heidel being, you know, kind of a big chunk of that, there was also a lot of, of requests for that. I haven't yet had a lot of requests for um, uh, specifics about VNDK or any of the other parts of the, I mean, people want to generally know about it, but there is, um, it, it's kind of like, uh, as I said yesterday, kind of a boring topic. Um, but, uh, but if I see enough requests about it, we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. All right, um, so it doesn't seem that there are any um, follow-up questions after this. I'll give it one more minute here and uh, then we'll sign off and uh, um, you know, possibly reschedule some other uh, session at some point in the future. The, the, again, uh, as I was just saying, depending on, uh, on the demand that, that I get. Um, and so most of the information that, you know, like the demo that I gave you, you can probably reproduce on your side. Um, just look at the, for example, the um, the lights, uh, the lights module or the light system service and walk through that one. And the reason I use that as an example is it's pretty straightforward to, uh, to walk through. Um, you'll notice that uh, some of the other Heidel's are, are a bit more involved. Oh, so one thing I didn't get the chance to show you there, but you can, you can look up uh, on your side is uh, you can actually pass Heidel interfaces essentially to Heidel interfaces. So you can essentially have um, one party 
providing another one, a Heidel interface that will be used to call back in the first. Um, and essentially, uh, you can then declare the interface is going that way to be one way. So that permits the caller to not wait for the, reci the recipient to actually respond back. And then the recipient can then call back uh, into the caller whenever it has some results. And in fact, I think the radio uses that uh, for talking back and forth, uh, essentially between, you know, saying, okay, let's make a phone call. You, know, you got a call, you know, the call's connected or whatever it is, and kind of like walking through that uh, in this fashion. Um, please bring down, don't bring down the videos from YouTube. Uh, no, the videos will stay there um, uh, uh, unless I do something uh, horribly embarrassing <laughs> in one of those videos. I don't intend to take those videos away. Um, and yes, I thank everybody uh, for refraining from trolling <laughs> the forums. Much appreciated. All right, so with that being said, um, thank you very much for attending wherever you tuned in from. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And again, if you find any issues with this video um, sometime in the future, um, technical issues or whatever, uh, or, or things that I said were, were incorrect, uh, by all means, uh, please post that in the comments section and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to pick that up uh, and, and, and fix uh, anything um, as, as possible, you know, either uh, through adding more comments or some kind of overlay on the videos or, or something like that. All right, thanks again and see you folks soon.